Hello there, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to use a very simple template that's available to download free of charge with this blog post. And it's for making this strip here, the kind of thing you get from a photo booth. Let's scooch over to the other document and take a look. OK, here it is, and it's a very simple document indeed. All I have is two layers and one group, and that's all there is to it. There's a little bit of shenanigans going on, but let me take you through that. On the background layer, I've got an effect. It's just a stroke. It's one pixel all the way around to separate it from anywhere that we put it. Next up is a marker. So all this is is the four squares that you can see there, but it's a good marker inside the group for when you want to add your other photographs. And then that layer is in a group, which also has a layer effect, this time an inner glow. If we go back to my finished article, you can see that there's this little square around it, and that's the inner glow. That's all that's doing. OK, let's go back. So I'll close that down. And then you can see that there's a mask on there too, and all will become apparent on that mask in just a minute. So let's go and get our photographs. I'm going to go into Mini Bridge. And you can see four photographs already. And they've already been pre-cropped to a square. And that's very important. Now the photographs I'm using are photographs that were very kindly taken for me by a young up-and-coming photographer by the name of Saskia Cole. Saskia is a great photographer and certainly one to watch. I strongly suggest you go and check out her website. OK, I'm going to make sure that my Select This Layer, then Add Photos is selected. And then click on the first image and shift click on the last image and we're all ready to go. And if I click on any of the images and start wiggling around, you can see I've picked up a whole bundle of them. I'm going to drag them over to the image and drop them down. Now, all four of them don't all come in together. They come in one by one pretty handy. So I'm going to move this one up. I'm going to hold shift down just so it keeps it in a straight line. As I do so, you can see where that mask on the group comes in handy. Okay, let's pop that one in somewhere along there. And I'm going to use shift and alt and just to constrain it and to transform from the middle. And there we go. Let's click the tick. And the second one pops up. And again, I can use shift to get it reasonably in the right position. And then Shift and I'm not going to use Alt this time, just use Shift and then use my arrow keys just to wiggle it around, get it in the right position. And instead of going and pressing the tick, I'm going to press Enter this time. And sure enough, along comes my next one. And I'll very quickly do this one now. That's better. There we go. A little bit bigger. Press Enter. And now I'm just going to use a scroll wheel to go down. And the final one, exactly the same way. And there we have it, as easy as that. OK, presenter. And they're all done. I'm going to close down Mini Bridge. It's bad enough looking at four of me, let alone eight. And if I twirl closed this group, you can see it's all nice and neat and tidy. Now, the other good thing is that they're linked together. So the background and this group are linked. And you can tell that because of these links here. So if I move the group or if I move the background, then the other one will go with it. Let me get my move tool. And sure enough, there you go. Everything's moving with it. I'm going to take it over onto my other document. I've just got to scooch them up. And then as if by magic, the magic of editing actually, the strips disappeared and I can just drop them on just like so. And there we have it. They're all ready to go. I'm just going to uh, turn off the notes just so we can see what we're doing. And there's our strip. I'm going to control T. And because they're both still highlighted, I'm altering both. And I can make that about the size I want. Click the tick. And there we have it. OK, one last little trick. If I go and highlight the background layer and then double click on the layer here, I can access the layer styles and I can add a drop shadow to that. I'm going to go, not use the global light, but I'm going to go about 90 degrees, or exactly 90 degrees, that wasn't a bad shot was it? And then bring this right out like 
that and maybe a little bit of spread and I'm going to click OK. Now that's all very well but it looks like it's stuck out from the cork board and that's not what I want. I'd quite like it to be flat at some point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click where it says effects on this layer and then I'm going to create layers. What that'll do is it will bring out the drop shadow here. There we go, that's on its own layer and also the inner stroke is on its own layer. But this, this, this one here, the drop shadow that I want, I'm going to add a layer mask to that and with a black brush I can then mask away some of the shadow there just so, oh that was a bit too much, just so it doesn't look quite so harsh. Let's go there and then there and there and then I'm just clicking and then shift and clicking and you can see then we've got this kind of transition there and let's do the same just up here a little bit just so we get the same kind of effect on the top. It's pretty subtle. Okay there we go and let's make sure that we highlight all of those uh, before we try and move them and sure enough there we have it. It's a bit too dark I think. Let's change the opacity of that down a little bit. There we go. That's better. Good. Let's turn our notes back on and you can see then that everything's as we wanted it. And there we go. Using the template to make this very simple kind of photo booth look. I'm Eric Reno. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you again to Saskia Cole for the photographs. I'll see you next time.